Forge Premier adjustable rail and style system is the only router bit solution for making stronger doors with extended tenons. Traditional stub tenons don't have the necessary strength for large door applications, such as entertainment centers or kitchen pantry doors. With just a few adjustments to your basic set, you're able to create tenons of virtually any length. And creating doors with extended tenons is very similar to creating doors with stub tenons. You'll need to calculate the rail length. It's a simple equation. The rail length is equivalent to the width of the door minus the style width times two plus the extended tenon length times two. For our door, the width is going to be 14 inches, the style width will be two and a half inches, and the tenon length will be an inch and a quarter. That will give us a rail size of 11 and a half inches. With that dimension, we're ready to cut our rails to size. With the rails cut to size, now it's time to create the extended tenons. To produce an extended tenon, we'll use the same rail bit we used to make the stub tenon. All you have to do is remove the top portion of the bit. With what's left in multiple passes, you can route a tenon of whatever length that you choose. The first step is routing a standard stub tenon. I've unplugged the router and inserted the rail bit so that 80% of its shank is in the collet and I've locked the collet nut. I'll use a straight edge to align the fence with the router bit's bearing and then I'll also need to bring the wings in closer to the bit for maximum support. But before I do any of that, I'll need to set the height of the bit. The rail bit needs to be set so that it produces a shoulder that's an eighth of an inch thick. I've marked this line on the end of my rail and I'll align this to the cutter. The router table's set up and everything's locked down. I've got my hearing protection on as well as my safety glasses and I'll be using this plywood backer block to help me safely route the end of my rails. After cutting the stub tenons, reconfigure the bit for extended tenons. Unplug the router for safety and lock the spindle. Be sure not to change the bit's height. With the included spanner wrench, remove the top portion of the bit. With the remaining portion, you'll be able to cut the copes for your extended tenon. With the router unplugged, I've moved my fence back a half of an inch from its previous position. And now I'm going to make my second pass on the rails. I've unplugged my router and to make the final cut, I'll set the fence an inch and a quarter from the front tip of the cutter. I'll lock the fence down and I'll make my finished pass. The next step is to cut the back side of the tenon. Unplug the router and lock the spindle. Then replace the top portion of the rail bit. Use the spanner wrench to lock it in place. We'll lower the router bit down so that the top cutter is in alignment with the underside of the stub tenon. We'll reposition the fence lock everything down, and in three passes, we'll finish defining our extended length tenon. I've lowered the router bit so that the top of the cutter is perfectly aligned with the underside of the stub tenon. I've got my fence in position for my first pass, and I'll keep moving the fence back until I define a tenon that's an inch and a quarter long. There are many different types of mortises. We've chosen to use a blind mortise for which we'll have to haunch the tenon. We'll cut down one half inch from the outside edge of the rail. However, we'll save 13 30 seconds of the tenon. This material is necessary in order to fill the groove in the style. After creating our haunches, we'll need to make our mortises, which are an inch and a quarter deep from the inside edges of our styles. Once I've got my mortises cut, I can now assemble my door.
The finished product is a rock-solid door that will last for generations.